What I'm going to use for the base is this uh, antique heart pine flooring. It's got the tongue and groove on the side. I'm going to cut those off. Uh, and then I'll cut it to length. So first I'm going to set these out, just kind of figure out about where they're going to be. Um, I did some playing around with it earlier and figured out I want about five and a quarter inches in between each uh, shot shell and I think it was three and a half inches from each end. So um, that spacing looks pretty good to me. Um, and then we'll cut it off over here. So let's get started. What's kind of convenient about the spacing I chose, where it's three and a half from the end and five and a quarter in between, and I honestly didn't plan this, but 28 inches is right where the end of the board would be, so it's a nice round number. So I have these spaced out, just kind of sitting there right now. Okay, so I'll get the speed square right at. 28 inches and mark. All right, I've got the shopsmith set up to rip the tongue off of the board. So here we go. Now we're going to rip the groove off. So now that we have two clean edges, I can uh, find the center and start laying out where I'm going to put the holes for those. All right, next I'm going to take the speed square and mark half. The board is now five and five eighths wide, so half of that is two and thirteen sixteenths. Because I've never done any shaping before, just do something simple with the bottom half of this. Um, shaping head and just kind of quarter round over the tops and then I kind of got the idea to lower it after that and then use the top half to cut to undercut the under the back side of it to I don't know kind of I guess make it look like it's floating off the wall once it's hung um, so we're, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the uh, long side using the rip fence and then I'll have to use the um, the miter gauge to do the ends and so we'll see how it goes. Alright, so I ran out of memory last night, but I did get all the uh, edges finished, even the underside. Um, so I think it turned out pretty well. Alright, so now we're over at the shopsmith. I've got it set up as a drill press. The table's tilted about 
10 degrees so the so the pegs will point up to hang stuff a little better the fence is set up to drill right in the center of the board um, and I've got a little piece of scrap behind it to keep minimize some tear out on the back side as the drill bit goes through so now I just have to drill So the length I need is about three inches, uh, give or take. It's going to depend on how far I can uh, get it jammed into the shot shell. Um, but I'm going to cut it to four inches. I've got a stop block set up. So I can just cut five pieces real quick. And uh, that'll just give me a little extra room to work with while I'm sanding them. All right, so after collecting all the pieces my saw threw around, um, I got five dowels, um, and now I'm gonna just take some sandpaper and sand it like that. Um, but I wanna be careful not to sand the end that's going into the backboard um, because the hole that I'm gonna be drilling into that is gonna be exactly three quarters of an inch. So I need that to fit nice and snug. So I just need to sand the part that's gonna go into the shot shells. So about that far. There we go. One down. All right, got those all done. So now I'm going to use the brad nailer and stick some nails just in the pegs to keep them from rotating by accident. Alright, now to finish uh, the whole thing really and, and make the edges look not so newly cut, um, got a piece of steel wool that's been soaking in vinegar I think three days now. Um, did some tests with it earlier and so you can see how much grayer and older kind of antique looking it is than the new wood over here so I'm going to put that on the edges and see um, to see how it looks and maybe it'll make it match to the rest of it better
Now I'll go ahead and do the back side and then we'll come check on it in I don't know, 20 minutes and 30 minutes and see how it looks. So the finish turned out pretty good. I think it uh, kind of antiqued it pretty well. I'm really happy with it. Uh, you can see the back side is a lot darker gray. The edges is not as noticeable where I chipped out. Um, and it only took, I think this is maybe 30, 40 minutes later. Um, you could start seeing it just a couple, couple minutes afterward. Um, so I'm going to let this dry completely. Um, might put a coat of poly something or other over it. Uh, not sure. We'll see. So I found these fancy flush mount hangers at uh, Lowe's. And it's basically two of the same pieces. Mount one upside down on your part. And mount the other one right side up. Like this on the wall. So when you put your uh, piece on, they, hang, they interlock. They hang. It's kind of like a metal French cleat almost. Alright, so I've got my space marked for my hanger. I'm going to chisel it all down to get it down to uh, this level down here. So we have uh, a flat even surface for the, for the hanging plate to mount to. Alright, so now I'm going to install the plates. I'm going to pre-drill some holes. I've got a depth stop here to make sure I don't go <clears throat> all the way through the board. So, here we go. And it slipped. Perfect. So I have a nice hole on the other side. <laughs> so to hide where I drilled through the board on the back side when I was hanging the hanger right here, I used a screw and uh, wire brush and some other stuff to just kind of make it look a little more gnarly like it was naturally there. Um, kind of like some of these other holes I've got. There's some other divots around here. Um, and just make it look like it was part of the wood rather than a mistake. So I did end up putting a coat of polyurethane on here to finish it up. Just kind of give it a little cleaner look and kind of to seal the vinegar smell in from the, uh, from the steel wool and vinegar mix I put on there. Um, but it's all done. So I've got the hardware taped on the back so I can wrap it up for Christmas. Hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.